one of the biggest matchups, I think, in the entire playoffs bracket is going to be 100 Thieves versus Team Liquid. Now, going into this, it's kind of crazy because Team Liquid is looking incredibly strong. It looks like they really don't have a weakness right now. They have brushed up their early game you know, deficits that traditionally Team Liquid is supposed to have, and they're supposed to be this kind of long con uh, team. And then you look at 100 Thieves and the fact that they were having a slump in the very end of you know, summer and as as far as the regular season, and then they come into playoffs looking really strong against evil geniuses, especially closer and someday. So this is gonna be a really fucking good matchup. I think we're in for a really good treat. Um, I think Santorin is playing like a fucking beast, and it seems like uh, just because he hasn't been playing with the main roster for a while, that, that doesn't mean that he doesn't have incredibly good synergy with all these players, which is kind of ridiculous to even postulate. And then you look at Core JJ, it's like, well, yeah, we got the old Core JJ back who's making plays around the map, who's looking absolutely fucking sick uh, throughout this whole playoffs. I think he's been the best player on Team Liquid by far uh, when it comes to, you know, encompassing all of the series that they played so far. And so, really, we're looking for a banger series. Now, I want to go, obviously, traditionally through lane by lane to tell you which matchup I think is is good or bad in terms of who's going to win or not. So, we're going to start with the top lane, traditionally, which is Someday versus Alfari. Now, these players, at least when you look at maybe uh, their type of pedigree, you would probably edge that out to someday, right? He's just a more experienced player. He's been playing for longer and, you know, he's fucking one LCK, but <laughs> we're not going to go on the historic reference because I don't really think that matters at this point uh, because of just Maybe the confidence of both players, I think, are on par with each other. The ability to brush it up when it comes to playoff matches, it looks to be just very even. So I'm not going to give any edge when it comes to just the, the mentality aspect necessarily. I think someday shat on impact when it came to the 100 Thieves versus EG matchup. I was, and I was incredibly surprised because. Nobody shits on impact, which is really weird when you think about it. The whole, uh, what was it? The gang plank versus uh, Jace matchup in game one specifically. Really good uh, play from someday. I think he played the lane very well. And, you know, with uh, using your Q effectively in order to trade with Jace in terms of uh, his range, I think that was really good. And, and you could kind of see that factor play uh, play out, in fact, and, and, you know, people, I guess, I think it's that people give a bad rap in terms of maybe GP is kind of weak early on, but it's like once you abuse that Q, and if you know how to do it properly, especially against a ranged matchup, you're able to actually take advantage of that 1v1, and I think Someday did that perfectly. With that said, Alfari also shot on Huni. So you have these two different players that play incredibly well, can dominate uh, either, you know, opposing top laner. But the problem is, is I think Alfari has done that more consistently than Someday has. We've seen historically, at least within, you know, this split, that Someday hasn't been performing that well. And you wonder if that's actually going to come up later on as we figure out this, you know, Team Liquid versus 100, 100 Thieves matchup. So I would actually edge it out to Alfari. I just think... On top of that, Team Liquid are far more comfortable playing towards topside, playing towards Alfari, versus uh, with Someday. They actually haven't been playing towards Someday a lot at all this entire season, in fact. And they've only been playing towards him recently within playoffs. And you could see that uh, with the uh, Evil Geniuses game. But even not to the degree that Team Liquid are actually doing and the fact that they're investing a whole lot of resources, especially if you notice the difference between Huhi and Core JJ, is the fact that Core JJ is up top lane way more than Huhi. And so you have to see that they're 
is this kind of counterbalance, in fact, when it comes to this top lane matchup, which is why I give it to uh, Alfari and to Team Liquid. I just think they have the better top laner just overall, but just the whole team dynamic makes it more so click for me in terms of that. So that's what I think is going to be the big deciding factor, especially within the series. Uh, but certainly for the lane aspect, I think Team Liquid have it hands down and Alfari has it. Uh, as well too now it gets a little bit more complicated when we go over to the jungle role because you look at closer versus santorin i think there there's a really big clash of styles when you look at these two uh players because closer is a type of player that can take over games he's he's very smart about how he you know, spends his resources towards uh, any particular lane at any given moment. And he's able to look for the advantages that may be possibly gained through ganking a particular lane. It doesn't look like he's actually controlled by his own team. It looks like he makes his own decisions based on what he think is best uh, in terms of like gank potential for particular lanes, in fact, which is why I see uh, Closer as more of an overall uh, kind of team jungler in the sense, not in the sense that he gets pushed around, but in fact, he determines which lanes are gankable and which aren't. And it, it kind of spreads the love in that sense, rather than the fact that he goes into the game with uh, an idea of what lane he actually wants to tackle specifically, which brings my point to Santorin in the fact that I think he's doing this more and more in, in that Santorin, he's, he's ganking one particular lane, which is what I actually like is that he is he's ganking top lane quite heavily and he's putting a uh, heavy amount of resources into top lane as well as a little bit mid lane just so maybe i don't know jensen doesn't tilt or if if jensen does uh, is able to pop off which he is clearly able to do and if you give him that little advantage he might actually be able to push that to the bounds of you know the universe so I think that is uh, one cool thing about Santorin's type of play is that he's able to hone in on a particular lane, which is why I say that this is a clash of styles. And not only that, but I think Santorin is also great at cross maps. Uh, something, funnily enough, is what Xmithy was one of the best players, I think, of all time in North America uh, that was able to do was uh, cross map plays and he figured out where to be at the correct moments at the right time depending upon the enemy movements of the enemy jungler i'm not going to say that santorin is actually as good as x mythy when it comes to that but it should be noted that santorin is actually good at cross map plays uh maybe that might be due to the entire team liquid infrastructure now that i'm thinking about it in terms of maybe core jj or uh, Jensen giving notes to do that. But I think overall right now, I actually prefer Santorin's play style because I think he's playing a lot more aggressive in terms of how he actually wants to play the game, which is very, uh, it's refreshing in a sense. And, you know, we saw his aggressive mode or aggressive style, uh, you know, before when he played on FlyQuest. And I appreciated that, uh, kind of reinvigorated um, play style that he had within that team. And I think we're finally starting to see that within Team Liquid to, to where Santorin is kind of unlocked in essence. So I, I would actually prefer uh, Santorin over Closer, even though Closer is the more flashy player in a sense and you know flashy junglers are really cool uh but i would prefer maybe a more consistent strategy maybe that what santorin is bringing at least from what i see from the eye test now <clears throat> we go to the mid lane of abadage versus jensen i think abe actually looked kind of weak against evil geniuses which brings me a little bit of concern uh we could see that jizuke I'm not going to say that he performed phenomenally. I don't think that he did, but he did have his spurts of brilliance, in fact. Uh, I think it was in game one, I want to say, he solo killed Abadage, which is like pretty fucking good, right? If you can solo kill a player in playoffs, that's pretty phenomenal because you know that person is a good mid laner. 
And so <clears throat> I think there are these shades of weaknesses that you see within Abadage uh, when it comes to his play and maybe that he isn't willing to do the risks necessarily that other mid laners do uh, in fact, make and try and create plays on their own accord. And so that's one area of weakness that I see within 100 Thieves. Now, that's not to say that Jensen also didn't have his bad game against uh, TSM, in fact. So I think there are weaknesses within both of these mid laners. And, but I, I would say, though, that Jensen looks overall just better. Um, but this also might partially be because of the Cloud9 series too, to where we got to see him stomp Cloud9 essentially, uh, you know, by himself at some points. And that might be clouding the judgment necessarily because obviously 100 Thieves got the buy, so they didn't actually get to play an extra series. Uh, but with that said, I think that was very good for uh, Jensen's confidence and the fact that now he knows that he's got his mojo back or rather that he can uh, dominate games or dominate mid laners again. And so I think maybe we'll see some of this going into 100 Thieves matchup and the fact that if he perceives Abadage as a weaker um, mid laner, then I think we'll actually see him play a little bit more aggressive call for more jungle attention, which is why I would put this mid lane matchup more in Jensen's favor. Now let's go to the bot lane obviously you know how i do they're attached to the fucking hip it's fbi and who versus tactical and core jj um i really think that fbi and who are actually playing pretty pretty good in fact um they're, they have synergy in terms of when who he wants to roam fbi doesn't do anything too fucking crazy but at the same time tactical is also just He's he's playing very well by himself, as we know, and with Core JJ kind of roaming all around the map fucking constantly, and even so too having skill expression champions like Bard, uh, you can see that this this basically gets into the enemy team's head of just like, how do we deal with Core JJ? You saw this within the TSM series to where TSM felt like they needed to pick Bard, and in fact. Uh, I thought Core JJ did a lot more on Bard than TSM did. And so I think really uh, that's going to be a big factor within this series. Uh, Tactical isn't trying to get cute when it comes to team fights and whatnot. He's not trying to go uh, super gung ho. You know, he's not trying to go Danny mode. And so <clears throat> I really do think that uh, kind of Team Liquid's. Um, more conservative style for the ADC and then Core JJ being able to roam a lot. I think Core JJ wins this entire thing uh, specifically because he affects the whole map versus I think who he in, in fact affects two thirds of the entire map, right? He, he is more so focused on mid lane or and he's focused on mid lane in terms of like putting out the fire of Abadage. And then he's focused on the bot lane as well too, more than Core JJ is. So <clears throat> these are the specific, you know, lanes that I think are going to win or not going to win. Uh, but what I want to address classically is of course, how do each uh, how does each team win? Which is, let's start with 100 Thieves. I think you win by focusing against the jungler. They can't do Core JJ style without the jungler's help. Because if you notice a lot of the times, it'll be a two-man gank, you know, with Core JJ's help, obviously. So if you're able to put down the jungler in terms of that, which will then also probably affect top lane because Santorin tends to go top lane more recently because also it is a I think it's a top lane meta at this point I think we can safely say that it is especially revolving around Rift Herald and how important first Rift Herald is you want to focus top lane and top side to get your your top lane or head not specifically because uh, you know, it's the best fucking champion in the game or whatnot, but because you want control of that Rift Herald to then uh, unlock more gold, and then you can start challenging for elemental drakes. And I explained this in another video before, and the fact that uh, I thought split pushing was pretty heavily dead, and I still kind of think that is true to a certain extent. Um, but 
that's what you want to do if you're trying to fight against um, a Team Liquid is that you you try and shut down the jungler. You don't try and shut down Core JJ. And I think if you have good vision priority for uh, cross map preemptive plays, you're going to be much more better off. Uh, you should try and ward that bot portion of the river in, in mid lane, right? And try and predict when Core JJ is going to come up to affect that lane. Uh, you should try and predict the uh, the tri bush when it comes to you know say if you're on uh, if you're on blue side as the top lander you should try and affect that top tri bush uh, in order to prevent core JJ from coming in or the enemy jungler coming in you need to protect your top laner against this entire team <clears throat> and I wouldn't worry about Alfari at this point uh, because I think someday is actually good enough to fight against Alfari uh, as a one on one. Uh, and I think Alfari's true actual strength comes from his team help. I think it comes from Core JJ. I think it comes from Santorin. And a lot of people are overshadowing this because he ends up stomping the shit out of other players that he doesn't need that help against. But when he does, it seems as though he's still doing the same thing as it were anyways. So I think if you cut off his access point in terms of his help from his jungler and especially his uh, support player, but you know that's kind of twofold in the sense that if you cut the jungler, you probably cut out the support player as well because then the play isn't even worth doing. So I think that's how 100 Thieves win. Keep control of vision in topside. Focus on the jungler in terms of how you can affect the enemy jungler's game. And don't worry about Afari. I, I think that's I think that's a false trail. You don't want to go down towards that. How does Team Liquid win? Well, just stick to one focus. I think it's very easy for Team Liquid to win this series, in fact. Uh, because what they're doing seems like they don't have a whole lot of weaknesses. And it, it looks like they just kind of need to fuck up at this point or 100 Thieves needs to figure out exactly how they play specifically, which I think I've given a little bit of credence towards how they play. So Team Liquid, stick to one lane focus because I think they do that better than uh, 100 Thieves, specifically Closer. I think Closer tries to spread the love too much rather than uh, to focus on one particular lane at one moment. And I would say Team Liquid can focus topside. Focus topside very hard. And then Closer, he's going to try and spread the love across all different types of lanes when, in fact, if you just snowball the fuck out of top lane, you're going to have Alfari smash someday at that point. Also, I've noticed this, uh, especially against their match, uh, 100 Thieves match against EG. Take advantage of who he's late roams. He's late to the party oftentimes. And Core JJ, we know he's early to the fucking party. You know, he shows up with, uh, you know, with the keg and he's all ready to fucking go. So he's ready to do keg stands. So, yeah, just just be prepared at least or keep proactive when it comes to the map in terms of getting more members uh, to the specific play that you want to do because 100 Thieves are generally kind of late towards uh, you know the, the play that they wanted to do or rather the play that they want to prevent from the other team. So overall, I think this matchup is going to be a 3-1 into uh, Team Liquid. Now, I know I did actually bet against 100 Thieves when it came to 100 Thieves versus EG, uh, <laughs> particularly because I didn't think uh, 100 Thieves ended the season that great and EG was kind of looking really fucking good. Uh, but TL is looking really fucking good. So am I the curse? Am I, you know, going to big up Team Liquid in terms of uh, being their downfall? Who knows? But I think Team Liquid actually got this just from a fundamental uh, play style discrepancy when it comes to just these teams' play styles clashing, specifically uh, both the junglers and the uh, supports.